Brodie Castle's rose-coloured walls, fairy tale turrets and beautiful gardens has been the Merrishire home of the Brodie clan for over 400 years, although there has been a Brodie family seat in the area since the 12th century. The castle itself houses magnificent collections of artworks, ceramics and furniture, over 6,000 books and a letter from Robert the Bruce. The Brodie Castle estate is easily accessed from the A96 at Brodie. There is ample car parking and an EV charging point. The estate is owned by the National Trust for Scotland and there is a small parking fee and a fee for entering the grounds and the castle. I'm Ellie and I'm Martin and today we are at the stunning Brodie Castle in Murrayshire the home of the national collection of, of daffodils. daffodils. Firstly we headed to the playful garden to try out the quirky and fun installations there. The garden explores the history of the Brodie family in a novel and fun filled way which everyone can enjoy. There is also a giant white rabbit. This is Scotland's biggest bunny sculpture and is very popular with both little kids and big grown-up ones too. Nearby there is a woodland adventure park and an indoor soft play area. Apparently if you whisper into this, the person standing at the other end can hear you, so let's see if it works. Hello? Hello. Oh, it's old Lang Syne. <laughs> That's clever. Look away now. And I think he's cute. Hello, mate. <laughs>
we um we came deliberately to see the daffodils here because there's a it's a world famous collection and there's over 200 daffodils so they're not actually out yet <laughs> it's april we thought they would be <laughs> Castle um, and its grounds are now looked after by the National Trust for Scotland and it will cost you a fee to get in unless, like us, you are members of the National Trust for Scotland and then you get in for free. But if you are a member of the National Trust for England, you do get in for half price. Yeah, you do, yeah. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills. And all at once, I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Find them. Hey. Hey. There may not be daffodils in the, um, in the nursery, but there's plenty in the walks around the estate. It certainly so we're is. not too early after all. No. <laughs> and they're bonny. They are very bonny. Mm -hmm. The estate is home to the national collection of daffodils, with over 200 different species in its grounds. Ian Brodie, the 24th Brodie of Brodie, bred more than 400 varieties of daffodil here between 1899 and 1942. He was a soldier and won the Military Cross in 1916. He planted his bulbs with military precision in straight lines and meticulously recorded each variety's family tree. He personally named over 130 varieties, the rest he left to be named by the estate's seedmen and his friends. Did you know daffodils were originally called daffodowndillies? The Brodies can trace their family tree back to Malcolm, Thane of Brodie, who died in 1285. When the castle was originally constructed, or whether it replaced an existing structure, isn't known. But it's thought that at least part of it dates back to the 1560s, when Alexander, the 12th Brodie of Brodie, was laird. Alexander had previously forfeited his right to the castle because of his involvement in the 5th Earl of Huntley's rebellion against Mary Queen of Scots in 1562, but was reinstated as Laird of Brodie in 1566. The house is a typical Z shape, characteristic of a Scottish fortified house of the 16th century. The estate was pillaged in 1645 by the Royalists who were fighting for Charles I against the Scottish Covenanters during the Civil War. During the 18th century, the house and gardens were extensively remodelled by successive lairds, running up a debt of more than £18,000, which was inherited down through the generations until 1824, when William, the 22nd Brodie of Brodie, rashly commissioned more work. But this work wasn't completed, and the work that was could only be paid for when William prudently married the heiress Elizabeth Bailey of Redcastle. He also commissioned more work, including the formation of the present entrance hall and library. It was the foresight of the 25th Laird, Ninian, and his wife Helena, who mapped out a plan for the castle's future, which has enabled the seat of the Brodies of Brodie to be preserved and held in trust for the nation. Ninian was born in the castle in 1912, and lived there until he passed in 2003. You can take a guided tour of the castle, which lasts around 45 minutes, but you'll need to book this online before you come to visit the estate to guarantee a place. Brodie's Copper Beech Tree is thought to be around 250 years old, but it is showing signs of severe distress. Beech trees are shallow rooted as they gain most of their nutrients from just below the surface of the ground. However, centuries of feet walking beneath its branches have compacted the ground and damaged its roots, meaning the tree can't get the nutrients it needs. To help the tree and its roots recover, the tree has been roped off and the ground below its branches has been aerated and mulched. It's hoped these measures will help the roots to heal and the tree to de-stress so that it can live for many years to come.
This path was originally designed as an avenue to impress visitors arriving at the castle on horseback. The area was landscaped in the late 1760s, when the triangular lawn was laid either side of the path to resemble the arrow on the family crest. Originally there were five ponds, which were joined together in the 19th century. The pond is home to a variety of wildlife such as swans, ducks and bats. There's even an otter. The grass is only cut once a year at the end of the summer so that wildflowers and insects can thrive here. Slightly bigger hide than the last one. Yeah, but the new one I'm quite <laughs> I like the fact though that they're all ramped so that uh, disabled people can get in, and there is actually a little area where a wheelchair can sit as well and look out. I think that's a brilliant idea. Very clever. Of Brodie Castle is this Pictish stone. 
um, called Rodney Stone and it's thought to have been carved 12,000 years ago and um, it probably, probably marks it probably marks the uh, site where people came for mass or to be married. Rodney's stone is a beautifully carved Pictish stone thought to date back to the 9th century. It was discovered when the foundations for a new church in the nearby village of Dyke were being dug. It was moved to the Brodie estate in 1782. It was called Rodney's stone to commemorate Admiral George Rodney's Caribbean victory over the French fleet during the American War of Independence in 1782. Hope you enjoyed your wander around the Brodie Castle estate. It was lovely, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And we didn't go inside the castle. Um, we did find daffodils in the end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Came specially for them and they're not out yet. It's just like mm. us. Um, we were particularly impressed, however, by the fact that um, the walks outside, in the gardens, around the pond, in the wooded area and the hives, mm -hmm. are all wheelchair accessible. A lot of thought and attention has gone into it. It's been good, like. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it was really good. Anyway, we do hope you enjoyed it. Thanks ever so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye bye now. Bye.